Okay, so uh, the title is on the slide, but everything will uh, become clear during the presentation. Uh, but what it doesn't work. Okay, so first I will speak some, uh, say something about CSPs and fin over finite languages, and then I will turn to. Bring your fluid to the na swoim okienku. Na tym PDF-ie. To nie działa, tak? Prysium tak. To nie działa. Dobra. Stop fair i jeszcze raz fair. John. Okay, so okay, so I'm back. Uh, okay, so I will speak about uh, CSP over finite and infinite structures, and in particular about some very uh, important algorithmic technique, uh, which is like uh, establishing local consistency. Uh, and then at the end, if time permits, I will also say about uh, some problems which are CSP-like. So not, not exactly constraint satisfaction problems, but uh, similar problems. Uh, okay, so the first thing is to de define what actually is a CSP. Okay, so we have a parameter, which is a relational structure. We start with finite relational structures uh, and they will be always over a finite signature. Okay, so we have a finite set of relations uh, in the structure B, and our instance is a set of constraints. Okay, each constraint uh, consists of, of variables, uh, like a couple of variables of some length and a relation, relation whose arity matches the length of, of the tuple of variables. Okay, so this is actually what, what we think, what is a constraint, right? And, uh, and the goal is to, is to answer, is to say whether this set of constraints uh, has a solution. Uh, a solution is, 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 is an assignment uh, to all the variables occurring uh, in the set of constraints to the domain so that every constant is satisfied. So if we, uh, so as, so uh, if you have a couple of variables and, and so it's, it's image under the solution has to uh, be a tuple in SI, right? For, for each constant. Um, okay, so there are many equivalent uh, ways to uh, define uh, CSPB. Uh, a different one is to say that CSPB uh, is just the set of all finite structure, structures over the signature of B, uh, such that that map from homomorphically to, uh, to B. Okay, so CSPB is also a homomorphism problem when the left hand side structure is uh, fixed, right? So we have B fixed, and for any structure which is similar to B, we ask if there is a homomorphism to B. So there are natural problems which can be defined in this way. I mean, the, the easiest one is like K coloring, right? I mean, free coloring is nothing else but the question if there is a homomorphism to a triangle, right? K free. And K coloring is just a question whether a given graph maps homomorphically to, uh, to a K clique, right? I mean, you can also define K sat uh, as a CSP, uh, also the question whether a set of equations over a finite field is set as, has a solution, it's also a CSP, right? So there are many, many problems. There are many natural problems which can be cast in this way, right? So it is, uh, it makes like research on, 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 on CSPB like uh, important, right? Because we 
we cast uh, many natural problems. And there has been this Fedevardi conjecture. Uh, so in 1993, in a paper at Stock, Thomas Feder and uh, Moshe Vardi, uh, they um, just uh, formulated a conjecture, right? So uh, by, uh, CSPB for every finite structure uh, B is either in P or it's NP complete, right? Already on the previous slide, we saw some NP complete problems, right? Like, like free coloring, like free sub, they're all NP and they are CSP uh, problems. And also some problems which are in P, like two coloring or two sub. It's also easy to see that in generality, CSPB uh, for a finite structure is in P. Uh, we can just guess a solution and check if it satisfies all the constraints. So this question is quite natural. Uh, also, when you compare it to the Ladner's theorem, there is this uh, Richard Ladner's theorem from 77, which says that if P is different from NP, then there, is, there are languages which are neither in P nor NP complete. Okay, so it is quite natural to look for a large class of structures, natural structures, which exhibit a uh, dichotomy. There are also other motivations, like to understand limits of applicability of some algorithmic techniques and so on, right? But this is the one that is mentioned always, always. Okay, uh, but this, this Fedevardi conjecture is just a, co a computational complexity conjecture. So it says, something is in P or something is NP-complete, but it's really hard to, but how to attack such a problem, right? We, we just get, we have to say something about like infinitely many problems. And uh, it is not that easy to, to know how to uh, try to solve it. So uh, it was maybe quite surprising, uh, but at some point uh, people started to use a universal algebraic uh, methods to, to work with this problem, okay? And uh, in this, this paper by Bulatov, Givons, and Krokin from ICAP uh, 2000, when they uh, formulated an algebraic, algebraic dichotomy conjecture, okay? So, they, so it's, uh, okay, so this is a, an algebraic theorem. And there are many formulations which are equivalent, but let's stick to this one. So if we have a finite structure, which is a core, I will maybe not extend this, just not to give too many definitions. Uh, so it either interprets, uh, PP interprets like this structure, which actually for us, which actually means that it's either, uh, um, either we can, it's like free sub, okay? So this structure is like free sub. Uh, so mm, we can either reduce from free sub to our problem CSPA, and then it's obviously empty complete, or there exists certain op operation. What is this operation? So we have a six R operation, uh, which can be seen as a homomorphism from the power, from the sixth power, of the structure back to the structure, right? So everyone can, everyone understands what's a homomorphism, right? But here we go to the powers, uh, to power of, of the structure. So it's this kind of homomorphism called a polymorphism. And this uh, operation, which is called a secret operation, has to satisfy certain equations, uh, which, is, which is depicted here, right? And, uh, and this algebraic activity con conjecture, uh, which was open for like uh, 70 years, 17 years, uh, was that, uh, okay, it's A and B here is a, it's a mistake, but if you have a Seeger's term in Seeger's operation, uh, so if there is a homomorphism from the sixth power of A back to A, we satisfy this equation, that CSPB is in P time. It was open for quite a long time, but it, uh, but it was finally confirmed. 
uh, by Zuk, by Dimitri Zuk and uh, Andriy Bulatov. They, but I mean, they, they proved it independently. Both, both papers were accepted to Fox 2017 and already the Zuk's proof is in the ACN. So it was quite an, uh, it's quite an important result, okay? So both proofs are carried out in algebraic approach, but uh, in different ways, okay? So they both use algebraic uh, universal algebra. I will go, not go into details because it's not possible to like, <laughs> explain everything in one hour and a half. But uh, so they both use universal algebra, but they completely different way. And both, uh, they both confirm this, uh, this algebraic dic dichotomy conjecture. Um, okay, so um, at least for some people, it's natural to ask what about infinite structures? Can we somehow prove a similar theorem to this bulatov zuk theorem, but for infinite structures? Well, I mean, for all infinite structures, it could be a bit complicated because already if we have a, a integers, uh, integers with, uh, uh, with times and plus and one, we have a polynomial, I mean, for every, for every language, we, we, we can find an infinite structure uh, which is polynomial time Turing equivalent to this language, right? So, so it's so it's uh, too hard like to think about all infinite structures. Uh, but there are some infinite structures which look a bit like finite structures. Uh, so they are called omega categorical. Okay, so this is not a definition of omega categoricity because it's a bit different and it says about models, about countable models. But what will be really important for us is to see uh, omega categorical structures, um, I mean, to, to look at their automorphism groups, okay? And they are a bit like finite structures because um, <laughs> all those relations which can be defined over this omega categorical structure we usually have infinitely many tuples. This, if you divide it by a, the automorphism group, it's always finite, right? So uh, for every relation, so, uh, so there's a number, uh, a finite number of orbits of n tuples for every n with respect to the, the automorphism groups, right? So there are finitely many uh, such, such relations, right? So you start with some tuple and you add all the tuples which uh, which are which are um, which you can get by applying automorphism, but they're only finitely many such uh, finitely many such orbits, and there are very known examples of such structures, like the rational numbers with the order. Uh, so when you think about it, it's like you have like this this relation over Q, uh, the order over Q. It has infinitely many numbers infinitely many pairs, right? Infinitely many pairs, but they are all similar. I mean, the, every pair x, y says that x is less than y and something x prime y1 satisfying the same inequality. You can use an automorphism and uh, produce one from the other just by applying out automorphism. Okay, so, and every, every structure and every orbit of, <laughs> Uh, of tuples is can be um, of any tuples can be represented by weak orders, right? I mean orders, weak orders because you can have some equalities there. But still, if you use equality and order over n variables, uh, there can be finitely many such 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 <laughs> such things. So there are finitely many orbits. Another example is a homogeneous universal countable graph. It's a homogeneous graph. I will define what's, what's homogeneous, but it's a graph uh, when you can embed every finite graph uh, into it. And the orbits of, of, of n tuples of these graphs are just graphs over n mm, vertices. And there are certainly finitely many graphs over n vertices. 
So also this structure is omega categorical. Um, so good news uh, is that the universal algebraic approach works, at least to some extent. And I mean, the, uh, it's, I mean, this research get, uh, dates back to a paper by Podolsky and Ben in 2003, let's say. But there are also bad news. There is no dichotomy for all omega categorical structures. So there are some omega categorical digraphs uh, such that the CSPB is in P, but it's neither in P nor can P complete. Okay, so, so still this, this class of omega categorical structure, um, maybe it's too strong, C too, too strong. Okay, so then we get to finitely bounded homogeneous structures. And it's all, all, almost that what we want. Uh, okay, so let's stay with some intuitions definitions. So we have a structure B, it's finitely bounded. What does it mean? But there's a finite abstraction set, F, B for this B, right? I mean, this is a set of things that, of, of, of finite structures, which prevent other finite structure to um, be embedded uh, into, 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 into B, right? So a finite structure C, C embeds into B, if and only if there is no guy in this FB so that it embeds into C. Maybe examples are more, um, are better than this definition. Okay, so there's also a definition of homogeneity, but I will get back to it. So Q and the order. So if you get a finite structure uh, over the same signature, over binary, binary signature, you can embed, embed it into Q. Uh, I mean, it's enough just to check if there's a loop in this finite structure, or maybe, so then uh, obviously you cannot embed such a loop. You cannot embed a loop into Q with the order, right? There, there are no loops there. I mean, there are also no symmetric edges, okay? So it is another bound and another abstraction, okay? And this I2, it's an uh, independent set of size two. I mean, all, all, all guys here, are comparable, right? I mean, so it's also forbidden. And, and the C3 is just a directed cycle of size, of size three. Okay, so it happens that you can embed a structure, a finite structure into Q of the order, if and only if there is no <laughs> such uh, forbidden substructure. Uh, and, okay, you can also find something like this for this homogeneous uh, universal graph. If you have a, a if you have a, um, a loop, okay, there are no loops in this in these graphs. Okay, there is no loop, and uh, or there is a directed edge, but you cannot embed it into uh, this random graph. There are other 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 structures like a countable universal homogeneous angle free graph. So this is a countable infinite graph. We just have all the graphs. Uh, but not but not K3. Okay, so then you forbid uh, a loop, uh, <laughs> a directed edge, and a triangle. Okay, but there are not many more. Uh, so we restrict ourselves to finitely bounded structures and also to homogeneous structures. So there are structures so you have some similar, you, so this, these structures are countably infinite, but you have two finite substructures which look similar, I mean, which are isomorphic. When you, this isomorphism can also always extend to an automorphism of the structure. Okay, so uh, we look at finitely bounded homogeneous structures, and even more, we look to first order redux of these structures. I will give an example. So the structures which have first order definitions in finitely bounded homogeneous structures. Okay, so the good news that CSPB for all these structures uh, are in P, okay? So it's now it's quite easy to, to check. It's basically you, you, you guess the solution and check if there are no forbidden substructures. Um, so it's in P. And there's a natural question, is there a P versus NP complete dichotomy there? Okay, so it's still, it's still open. 
but maybe it's not obvious for everyone who's a first order redux. So I give an example of a first order redux of Q. So this is actually every structure which you can define using first order logic. So you can clearly define, if you have order, you can clearly define a weak order, like say, you can say X is less than Y or X equals Y. You can also define uh, this, this inequality, but also this like more complicated relation, right? This relation says that if X, Y equals Y, then Y is greater than Z. And, and, and many others, right? Basically Q has uh, quantifier elimination. So you can define everything like by a conjunction of, of some kind of clause, clauses, right? But these, all, all these guys are first order redux of Q. So this uh, dichotomy you want to achieve doesn't only cons concern Q, but all, all the things that you can first uh, define uh, using first order logic from Q, from uh, random graph. Okay. Uh, and, and here's an instance, right? What, what can instance can look like? So you can say that X has to be less than or equal to X2, X2 has to be less than or equal to X3, X3 and four uh, less than or equal to, and so we have here a cycle, right? I mean, uh, consisting of four, or, or, of four variables. And when we have this, another constraint, which says that if X equals X4, then X4 is greater than X5, but we also have a constraint which says X5 is different from X4. Right? And, and we need a solution over Q. So we can find one, right? I mean, we need to uh, give the same value to all variables X1, X2, X3, and 4, right? I mean, it's, it's like enforced by these first four constraints. And since, and this, this first four, four constraints, they trigger this inequality X4 greater than X5, right? It's from the definition of this relation R. Uh, but I mean, this is like a uh, like it, it's more general than uh, so it's, it's also okay, right? I mean, you can also satisfy this constraint just by this uh, solution. And uh, <clears throat> but if you change the last constraint, if you if you demand x four to be less than x five, then it's not possible to satisfy it, right? Because this first four constraint they trigger X4 greater than X5, uh, but we also want X4 to be less than X5. So it's not possible to satisfy uh, this set of constraints. Okay, and we have like also infinite algebraic tractability conjecture for this first order redux of finitely bounded homogeneous structure. Okay, so it's on the algebraic side, it's now when we look at, at cores, and it, for the dichotomy, it's enough to look at cores. Uh, then we either can show NP completeness again by reducing from one in three sub, from three sub, right? And, uh, or we have something which is called a pseudo Seeger operation. It, it looks like a Seeger operation. The difference, but this is not exactly the equality. It's like equality uh, modulo some U9 functions, right? So we don't, this equality doesn't have to hold like literally. Uh, it can, <laughs> it can hold by uh, modulo A1, A2, right? It's like A1 composed with, with F and this is uh, E1 and E2 composed with F. Okay, so it's like uh, this kind of thing. So this holds, I mean, this theorem holds, um, and we want, uh, but the conjecture, which is open, is can we, is, is the question, can we actually turn this mm, algebraic uh, condition into an algorithm or do, an, or maybe prove this conjecture in a different way, right? But uh, does this pseudo Seeger uh, give tractability? Does it? Uh, put CSPB in, in, in P time. It's not known. Okay. <laughs> okay, but there's another question. Is it worth studying this kind, 
uh, is it worth studying? So one one when you want when you wonder if it's, it's worth studying, you always ask a question: Are there any natural problems uh, there in, in this formalism, which are? Uh, I mean, okay, so there is a problem. The CSP for Q, the order, is diagraph a cyclicity, right? I mean, if you get a, a, a diagraph, so it's acyclic, even only if you can uh, map it homomorphically to, to Q with the order, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious. And this problem cannot be expressed if you have a finite structure. So CSP B for a finite structure cannot uh, define this problem, right? You cannot. Uh, cannot, it cannot be formalized. So it's, there is at least one problem uh, which can be uh, formalized if we have a, a finitely bounded homogeneous structure or, or a three uh, but cannot be expressed uh, for finite structure. And there is more general, there is number of, of problems uh, in so-called spatial and temporal zoning that can be expressed in this framework quite naturally, right? I mean, just, just to give you a flavor, if you think about variables as some kind of events, so this, this inequality is, is some kind of uh, precedence constraint, right? So you can say that one even have to take place before another one and, and so on, right? And also for all redux of Q, you can give some, let's say temporal, uh, temporal, um, um, all right, explanation, right? Uh, okay, so there are some problems, some problems we cannot, that cannot be defined for CSP over finite structures, but uh, they fit this new framework. Uh, okay, so there are some partial classifications, um, which uh, for, sometimes it's true. I mean, we, don't, we don't know if this conjecture holds in the whole generality, but there are some examples they are not mentioned. They are not all mentioned here, uh, but uh, there are many like uh, theorems which prove it for just first order index of some simple finitely band bounded homogeneous structures. So if you have any index of Q, it's known for already 14 years that we have a dichotomy. Okay, so if it's something say index of this Q with, with the order, that's in P. Or it's NP complete. The same, there's for random graph uh, or countable infinite equivalence relation with infinitely many equivalence classes. Uh, and these both think, <laughs> things are just examples of homogeneous graphs. Okay, and the classification for all homogeneous graphs. So for, for, for first of all, the redex of all homogeneous graphs uh, was also proved. Uh, and there are also other, other uh, partial results, like maybe quite interesting is that it's for all problem in, which are expressible in MS and P, right? So this is, uh, this is a, some kind of logic. So maybe I would not go into details, uh, but <clears throat> so, so this slide is titled partial classification. So uh, we've done with this. And possible scenarios. So, can, how can how can we try to uh, solve the dichotomic question? So, it's quite natural to, to ask: Can we can we uh, reduce uh, this infinite dichotomic question to the finite, which is already um, which is already solved, right? Or uh, or in, in other words, can, can we at least sometimes uh, solve CSP? For an infinite structure by reducing it to a tractable finite structure. Uh, it can maybe it's possible always, maybe it's possible sometimes. Uh, so often it's possible. Actually, in almost all the cases above, uh, that the algorithmic results are are either originally given or can be <laughs> can be reworked in uh, just <laughs> They can be uh, just um, the tractability above almost in all the case can be uh, proved by, by by this reduction to the finite, uh, the finite. Uh, and also 
even recently, even in more cases, we can do it thanks to a quite recent paper by Mote and Pinster. Uh, but sometimes for some redact, it's, we cannot. I mean, at least uh, uh, we, we cannot do it, right? Maybe at least maybe we don't know yet how, but uh, not using um, a variable methods. Okay, so there are other questions. If, if perhaps we cannot just reduce the problem to the finite dichotomic question, so can we turn the pseudo Seeger operation into an algorithm somehow? Are there any algorithms solving infinite CSPs? Um, okay, so uh, quite natural algorithm for all the CSP things, finite or infinite, is uh, they are, they're algorithms based on local consistency. So local consistency is everywhere. Right? In CSP solvers, we have arc consistency. Uh, and so, uh, and uh, <clears throat> so this is quite um, applica it's applicable, but it's also interesting from, from a theoretical point of view. So there are different algorithms for local consistency. I will look at establishing KL minimality. Okay, so it's an algorithm which establishes KL minimality. And I will first give an example for two free. Okay, so we have this. Uh, so this is a, <clears throat> a CSP example from some slides back, right? So we have again this, this we want x1 to be less than x2, x2 when x3, x3 when x4, and, and so on. So we have this cycle. When we have this relation, uh, telemary more complicated relation, and then we want x4 to be less than x5. And we know it has no solution. Okay, so how can we use uh, minimality to 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 <clears throat> solve solve this problem? So what are these numbers two three? So we start with three. Three it means that uh, we add constraints so that for every uh, three element subset of vari variables, there's at least one constraint uh, that captures them, right? So we want for all x, i, x, j, and x, k uh, in five, right? And less than or equal than five, we want we, we add a new constraint, which is uh, at the beginning three, though, right? So we have q, so it allows all tuples, okay? So it's the first step. We add for all three element subset of variables a new a new constraint. Okay, and then and then uh, we start to um, remove tuples from from variables, and you want and in the end you want to obtain a, an instance so that the the projection that uh, to let's say we 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 choose x, i, and x, j. So, so we now remove tuples uh, so that the projections to x, i, x, j will be the same across all the constraints, right? So for all the constraints which have x, i, x, j, we want the projections to be the same. Right now, it's not the, it's not the case, right? Because if you have x1, x2, x3 here, uh, then the projections to x1, x2, it's just q squared, right? And this constraint and the projection here to x1, x2, they're not all, it's not q square, right? They're just <laughs> pairs such that x1 is less than or equal x2. Okay. So we move, remove, uh, remove tuples. Now, if there are any questions. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we added this new constraint here. So it's the, the, this old. Uh, this this old uh, this old um, set of constraints, and we added these three ternary constraints, right? They just uh, just don't say anything right now, right? But we we start to remove uh, remove tuples. Okay, so of course the algorithm the algorithm does it blindly, okay? And I will just choose uh, these steps which which I want which which are uh, uh, <laughs> which I want, right? I mean, the algorithm does it as long as these projections are not identical. And I, I will just 
choose some steps to illustrate the algorithm. Okay, so we start from the C1, uh, one, two, three, right? In the beginning, they were all, uh, all possible uh, triples here, but you want the projection to, to X1, X2 be the same here in this constraint as in the C1 constraint, right? So we remove all the tuples or the orbits, okay? All the orbits uh, for which it doesn't hold. Okay. So we know that every relation can be can be represented by a finite number of orbits, right? It's just omega, omega categoricity, okay? It's omega categoricity. So we remove remove orbits. Uh, we remove orbits of triples here. Okay, so it's, it's the first step. Mm. Then we look at the projection to do D2, D3. And for now, it can be anything, right? But it can't by the, by the second uh, constraint. Okay, so there's a, a mistake. I'm sorry, it should be less than or equal, right? Uh, so we also um, impose this uh, inequality. And by uh, transitivity, we have, we have this, right? So we carry on. And then we look at one, three, four. And then there is, uh, we look at the, at the projections to x1, x3. It says it allow, allows only such tuples, right? So we also enforce it for this, for this constraint. Then we obtain d4 less than or equal d3 uh, less than or equal d4. It's just uh, we can do it because of the constant C3, right? And by transitivity, we obtain D1 less than or equal D4. Okay, and then we can uh, look at the constant C4, which says that D1 has to be greater than or equal to D4. And in in result, as a result, we have that all these things have to be equal. D1, D4, D1, D1, D4, and D3, okay? So then we look at, at C5. And in C5, C5 has to satisfy this if X, X1 equals X4, then X4 is greater than X5, right? But because of, of this constraint, we need D1 to be equal to D4. So, so it has to happen. And by, 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 by this relation R, which you have in constraint C5, uh, we remove all the tuples so that D4 has to be greater than D5. But now the final step, the final step is to look at this projection and the constraint C, C, C6, right? The constraint C6 has, says that X5 has to be less than X4. Okay, so there's a mistake, right? I'm sorry. It should be X5, um, X, X5, it should be X4, X5, right? But it says uh, that uh, this is C6, right? It, it says that D4 has to be less than D5, uh, but it's not possible, right? So it removes all the tuples, right? So it removes all the tuples, okay? It removes all the tuples, so it's an empty constraint. Okay, so everything that we were doing, uh, we were re removing tuples from constraints, but we couldn't, we, but in the way that couldn't kill any solution, right? I mean, every, everything was, uh, was uh, the whole inference. I mean, it, it was removing only the tuples from the constraints that couldn't be a part of the, of the global solutions we are looking for in the CSP problem. Uh, so if we, ended up with this empty constraint, uh, it means that there was no solution in the, at the beginning. And then in, and in, in <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so the conclusion is that the original set of solutions had, uh, concept had no solutions, right? I mean, adding these variables, <laughs> this constraint, uh, over three variables doesn't, doesn't change the set of solutions, right? I mean, 
because it, it says nothing, it just says that every key has, group has to be uh, in Q, Q, uh, Q cube, right? Uh, <clears throat> and also this removal of the of the tapos, it doesn't kill any solution. So C has no solution. This our C uh, doesn't right. So in general, uh, we, we we don't have to have two and three, right? I mean, this two and three here was three because we're adding with ternary constraints, and two because we were looking at projections to two variables. But in general, it can make be K and L. It can be K and L, right? For K, less than or equal L and L. Uh, so then the, this KL minimality algorithm, it look it works in a similar way, but way, but first we add <clears throat> L element const constraint for every element subset of variables, right? And then we move tuples. So like we look at every every subset of at least of at least of, of a, of at most k variables, and we remove, and we have two constraints which inverse scopes have these variables. We just remove the minimal number of tuples so that the projections were identical. Okay, so it looks works exactly in the as in the way I presented by for bigger k and l. Okay, and and it works in polynomial time, right? If k and l are fixed. It works in polynomial time because uh, <clears throat> that we we add uh, at most polynomially um, like n to the at most that many uh, that, that many new new constraint right and then we move tuples and it can be done in polynomial time for fixed L and then if at the end we opt in an empty constraint, right? Then we know just with, with, no, uh, with no conditions imposed on, on, the, on, on the like constraint language, there's no solution, right? But sometimes sometimes it happens. There are some structures for it's, it's enough for, each, for which we have if and only if. So there are some structures. We say that these structures have relational with KL. And they have even on if establishing KL minimality on, on any instance of CSPD infers an empty constraint if and only if C has a solution, right? So for for I, I tried to argue before, uh, then uh, just doesn't kill any, but, but this procedure doesn't kill any solutions. But uh, so if we obtain an empty constraint. When there is no solution, but sometimes uh, if we don't obtain it, right? I mean, this this procedure for establishing KL minimality it doesn't. Uh, so it's it, 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 at some point it 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 finishes, right? It's because uh, we remove tuples, right? So at some point it finishes, and 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 <laughs> and this structure but has relational with KL. So if you have no empty constraint, then we can construct, then there is a solution uh, for this original set of constraints, okay? In general, we say that structure has bounded relational width if it has relational width K -A -K -L for some K and L, okay? So it's a natural definition. And it happens that there are certain, uh, <clears throat> uh, but, Bounded width can be uh, characterized by some algebraic conditions. Okay, so uh, we say that an operation is weak near uh, an unity operation if it satisfies these equations. I mean, all these equations, right? And also it's either bottom. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that if we have uh, so we have a function uh, from bk to b and satisfies this equation if for all y x in b it's satisfied, right? So if we have, for example, two three 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 and three two three three three, so the uh, so we have to be equal, right? 
<clears throat> there are other operations, a new unanimity op operation. It's when we also have inequality here, right? So it's inequality here. And uh, another operation uh, is which we will need, it's a totally symmetric operation. It just, <clears throat> we have a diff the same output if we have, if x1, xk and y1, yk are, are the same set, right? So you just take, you take these uh, arguments here and here, and you look at, at, at the set actually, right? Because it can be x1, 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 x2, x3, x3, x3. If it's, they are the same here, it's not only a different permutation, but the same set, and they have to be equal on, on such all such um, <clears throat> inputs, right? And they are totally symmetric, uh, they are called. Okay. And, and it happens that this free, uh, <clears throat> that this free uh, conditions on operations are quite important for understanding bounded relational width or bounded width, it's also called bounded width. Okay, so uh, one of the first uh, results uh, is that A has relational bounded width, uh, relational width, right? It should be relational width, one L for some L. Uh, if there's a totally symmetric operation, right? Preserve, uh, preserving the structure, but for every argument, for every argument you need to have it, right? So it's again this homomorphism from the power of the structure back to the structure, also called the polymorphism. Uh, and it has to satisfy this, uh, this uh, it has to be totally symmetric. If you have it uh, for every k for the structure, then you know that you can, you can solve it by establishing one L minimality, okay? So an example of a problem, well-known problem, which has bounded with one L is Hornsat, for instance, if you think about it, right? Uh, maybe I will not give details now, but you can, you can solve it, you can solve Hornsat uh, by this, uh, like uh, establishing one L minimality. And uh, there's another another characterization, much more mature, uh, for all things which are um, which have bounded relational width, right? Not not only one L, but it can be seven fifteen, for instance, right? Uh, and a structure has bounded relational width, even only if uh, for every if there if if there is this polymorphism for A, right? Um, which is a weak new unanimity operation, but you need it for every RIT greater than or equal to three. Okay. <coughs> okay. And, it was, and it was quite one of, one of the most important results, maybe not as important as the dichotomies, but it was uh, very important in the history of, of CSP. And also because uh, the research on this problem and similar problem, um, the authors developed the notion of absorption, uh, which was uh, which was used then in the Jukes proof of the dichotomy. So this is really an, uh, because it, I think Fox uh, 2009. Uh, <clears throat> and then there's a, a similar result which is quite relevant to what I want to say. Uh, I mean, similar using similar tools. Uh, uh, it was shown that a finite structure has bound relational width, even only if, if it has one one or two three. It has one one or two three. So it's not like you can have five fifteen seven one hundred seventeen and so on. There are only two. There are only two numbers which really matters. And this theorem is called the collapse of the bounded width hierarchy. It's because it just, you cannot have any numbers. I mean, if you can solve something using minimality 515, but you can use it, maybe you can solve it using two three. 
And uh, another, another notion, it's bounded street weave. Okay, so we know what's a bounded weave. It's when we can solve CSP. It's a, it's a property of a structure, right? But bounded weave me says that we can solve CSP for the structure, but by establishing K and minimality. Uh, but the street weave says something more. It says that establishing K and minimality for some KL, it not only uh, it not only solves the problem, but also tra transforms uh, this problem C into an explicit set of constraints. Okay, uh, which means that if you have this uh, KL minimal uh, instance, then you can obtain every, every when, when every partial solution can be extended uh, to a total solution without big track. Okay, so it's quite of explicit. And it's known, it's quite, it's not that hard to prove. But the final structure, that bounded street with, even only if it's preserved by any new unanimity operation. So maybe you didn't, you don't remember what we used all three, uh, all three conditions from the, from some, from, from uh, some slides, uh, like several slides ago. Okay. And another result, uh, we, okay, so, Establishing minimality gives uh, polynomial time, but it's known that for bounded stick tweet, you can have even a not space. Okay, and there's also an additional motivation for studying bounded weave. I mean, it, it has many different, you can, um, <laughs> define it in many different ways. Okay, so, structure has bounded width, it can be solved by the data log program, it can be expressed, its complement can be expressed in data log as logic. Data log is something like first of the logic, like existential first of the logic, but with some uh, fixed point operator, okay? But you can also say about so-called pebble game, right? You can play on, 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 on an instance A and this parameter structure B uh, with K pebbles and if, uh, spoiler cannot show there is no homomorphism, uh, then there is no. So there are many different ways you can define um, bounded width over finite structure. And it was actually we proved this theorem or a very similar one for omega categorical structures. Maybe it's not, it's not worth it to go over it in details, but there are many ways you can, you can look at bounded width. <coughs> okay, but now we want to turn to infinite structures, right? So this first order reduct of finitely bounded homogeneous structure. And for this, we, we also need, need um, some operations satisfying certain equations. Okay, but here these equations are satisfied like modulo certain Unary operations. So it's written in a different way, right? But we have this weak new unanimity. It was satisfying these equations, but it was written in the, in the one line. Okay, but I, I go with it like in many lines. So it has to satisfy. So we say that an operation is pseudo weak new unanimity if it satisfies similar equations, but you can add here certain uh, unary operations which so then you know operations right so in this case if this these operations come from a set of unary functions operations f when you say that this this operation f is a pseudo weak unanimity operation modulo f okay and we have also a pseudo variant for uh, weak new unanimity and also for totally symmetric I mean, it's inside the same equations, but we can add unary operations here. Okay. Unary operations. Just, it was the same for Seeger's term, right? I mean, for finite, we had Seeger's term, and for infinite structure, we had we have pseudo Seeger's term. So here we have pseudo weak new unanimity, pseudo new unanimity, pseudo totally symmetric. Okay, and another thing which we need are canonical operations. 
canonical operations. So if we work with infinite CSP and we look at operations from infinite domain to, I mean, from infinite set to infinite set, but can be, but can be quite weird, right? I mean, quite, quite savage, <laughs> quite wild, right? I mean, it can be not even definable in a reasonable way, right? But there are some operations which are called canonical. And we say that an operation is any canonical if it use let's say a1 to ak are tuples, are tuples, right? Uh, and if we apply apply to the it to some tuples, like okay. Uh, okay, let's say let's say we have a, a random graph. Okay, we have a random graph. And a1, ak are pairs. If they are pairs over the random graph or this infinite graph, they can be even joined, either joined by an edge, they can be not joined by an edge, or that can be equal, right? So this condition says that if you fit this function with, with a pair like uh, of the same type here, of the same type here, right? And you get the same, uh, the, the, the same uh, output, right? Because of this A1, let's say there are two, two points which are connected by an edge. This is an, an automorph, uh, this is an automorphism of, of, this, of this graph. So this is also an edge, right? Because an automorphism can only mm, like take an edge to two to, to, to things connected by an edge to other two things connected by an edge, right? So if they have the same type on every, on every uh, coordinate, then they have to give the same result modulo, modulo automorphism. This definition is given in terms of permutation group, but every uh, automorphism group is a permutation. So here's an example. So this is, this is an uh, operation over infinity. It's from the, so we have this infinite graph. So we have a binary operation from V square to V, right? <clears throat> and, and, and we don't like to think, you don't have to think about any two points there. We just say that we have an operation, which if it takes an edge and an edge, then it gives always an edge. Doesn't, it doesn't matter which edge is it. That's why it's canonical, right? Because on a similar type, it gives the same output. If you, if you have two, two guys here connected by an edge, not connected by an edge, right? Yeah, two different guys, but not connected. And the other guys are connected, but you always get this end. So these canonical operations, they, they actually depend on, on types, right? So it looks like a finite operation. It looks like a finite operation, even though it's, it's infinite, on the infinite set, okay? Um, and, Okay, so uh, can, and when we get there, uh, get now is that we want to say how much we know in the infinite uh, case, right? So for finite, we knew that if a structure has bounded strict width, then it has near unanimity operations. Okay, so for omega categorical, we know that if B has bounded strict width, then it's preserved by a pseudo new unanimity operation modulo almost automorphism, right? If they're not automorphism, just a closure of automorphism. Let's say modulo automorphism. Uh, and there, there was also other condition for the whole bounded width uh, by Kojic and Bartor. And this can be turned into sufficient condition for infinite structures, right? So if we have um, for every k, we have a pseudo weak unanimity operation modulo automorphisms of the structure. Then the structure has bounded relational width, right? Okay, we again we start from a finitely bounded continuous structure. For for instance, it's like the Raman graph. When you get to the first order reduct, which is B, and we Assume that for every k, okay, there is a pseudo uh, weak new unanimity operation 
of this RBT modulo automorphism of, of A, which preserves this operation. But this has band, uh, band it has bound relational, but it's a sufficient condition. It's not even only if. Okay. Uh, that's true, there's no set of identities that can capture uh, redux of finitely bounded homogeneous structures. It is infinite structures with bounded relational. Okay, so it was shown, but, but there's no this theorem like Bartokozic theorem, but for these infinite structures. So possible research directions are here. But perhaps we should look at fixed point logic. It's a logic which is richer uh, than data log. Okay, so data log was a, di a different way of saying uh, something has bounded with. And over this infinite structure, fixed point logic has a different expressivity than uh, data log. For finite structure, it's the same. Okay, so it's one of possible research direction, maybe just data log is not natural for infinite uh, structures. Maybe fixed point logic is more suitable. Uh, oh, there was, there's another question for bounded sticks with, uh, can, can we have it in log space for this infinite structure? It's not known, at least I don't know. Um, and the, the other thing which was proved for finite structure was this bounded relational with collapse of the hierarchy, right? It was known that only one, one or two, three minimality is, uh, is enough. So does it hold for infinite structures? Uh, what do you look at? Okay, so let's, let's look at it. So I told you about <clears throat> The infinite graphs, homogeneous infinite graphs that forbid a triangle. Okay, you can construct such a graph for every k clique. So it's an infinite homogeneous universal graph. It's denoted H k, and it embeds all the finite graphs, but not k cliques. Okay, these these graphs are called also Hansen graphs. Okay, so if you get an instance. For this HK, like this, right? What does this instance say? It has K variables, X1 to XK, and it says that it has to be an edge between any two variables, right? So if you write such an instance over HK, it's of course not satisfied, right? Uh, it's not satisfied. There is no embedding by definition. There is no homomorphism because there is no loop there. And you cannot, right? I mean, you cannot map this. <laughs> Map a k click. Uh, if there's no loop, you cannot uh, map it uh, not, non injectively. Okay, so it's not satisfied over HK. There's no solution. So if you look at an instance, which is one, two, k my one, minus one minimal, and it's equivalent to, to, the, to this one above. So if you think about it, for every k minus one subset of these variables, you get an, a constraint, right? So a constraint which is in scope has these variables. And the only possible, uh, right? And the only possible thing here is a, is a clique of size k minus one. Okay? But it's okay. I mean, this constraint is okay. Uh, it's okay because this, this HK graph, it contains uh, clicks of size K minus one, right? So what did I say? I said that establishing two K minus one minimality doesn't, we don't get an empty constraint, right? On this, on this set of constraints, which is not satisfiable. This means that establishing two K minus one minimality doesn't solve uh, doesn't solve CSP for HK. Okay. Uh, so HK doesn't have relational with 2K, 2K minus one. It can be also shown that it doesn't have one, uh, should be K, not, uh, not 2K, one K, it should be one K. Uh, it's because the projection to one variable, it's always, it's always the whole set. 
but it's but HK on the other hand has relational with 2K, right? I mean, there's something to prove, but this 2K, it's enough to, de to detect K clicks in the instance, right? But uh, so, so if there is a K click in the instance over CSPHK, then it can be detected by establishing 2K minimality, okay? Uh, and there's there is no then there's a uh, there, there's an, an embedding of the instance to HK, right? So it's not that it's hard to see that HK has relational with exactly 2K because it doesn't have 2K minus one, it doesn't have 1K. So what does it mean? So since we have a handsome graph for every K, it means there's no collapse. Okay, so there is no collapse. Uh, so maybe I, uh, there's no collapse, okay, of this hierarchy. But there are some collapses, okay? I mean, there is something you can prove and it's not trivial. And it's still quite interesting, I believe. So I, we proved that if we have this H, uh, HK, right? We have this graph HK, when it needs, uh, when it needs, um, <laughs> Minimality 2K, but uh, what about first order redacts of this HK? Uh, if we only look at first of order redacts, do we need some uh, which have bounded bounded width? Do we need something more than 2K? Right. So what's what's what's, what's proved? It's like our paper from ICAL 2021. Uh, we found one Mote, Tomasz Nagy, and Michal Pinsker. and actually we. Uh, so we have these homogeneous structures and L bounded and, and bounded structures, right? Like this finitely bounded. So uh, we looked at, at at these finitely bound homogeneous structures, and we said what it means to be K homogeneous, and we said what is L bounded, okay? And still a non-categorical structure, and we looked at first or the redact of the structure L, okay? Now this is B here. And we showed, showed that if there is a, a the pseudo weak unanimity operation for every k, okay, for the structure V, uh, which is canonical with respect to automorphism of A, then we have relational with 2k max uh, 3k L. Okay. So it means that. If B is this <laughs> HK graph and satisfies all of these conditions, right? So it's and the first order reduct. Uh, so the the width of B depends only on A, right? Only on A. Uh, so it's with 2K max 3KL. Okay? Um, okay, so maybe we don't have like uh, mm, we don't we don't have collapse of the hierarchy for all finitely bounded homogeneous structures and the redux, but if we have a B which is which is a redux of A, then it's bounded width depends only on A. Under certain um, under certain uh, conditions, okay. And it was actually mm, like this, this is proved by a new reduction to finite, right? Because in finite, we had this 2, 3, right? And that's why this 2K, 3K. And L is the biggest forbidden substructure as size L, and we have to detect it. And we also proved that if there is a, we have this totally symmetric operations, which are canonical. And we have pseudo mm, and so on, but we have relational with k max k plus one l, for example. And what is the corollary? So, mm, so let's say we have a structure which has bounded width, and if this b is a first order reduct of the random graph, this is universal homogeneous graph. Or universal homogeneous tournament of a unary structure 
they always have relation with at, at most four six. Um, if it's this universal homogeneous Kn free graph Hn, which I was talking about previously, then it's always 2n, right? So this is what you can see. We showed that for Hn, it's 2n, but it's also 2n for all redux. Everything you can define from Hn and has bounded to it, right? So for redux, there is no collapse. There is collapse, okay? Also, if you have a redux of n, with equality, or we have this infinite equivalence relation with infinitely many equivalence classes. Uh, it has its like it's C omega omega for some reasons. Or we have a universal homogeneous partial order, uh, but it's at most two free, right? So this is just an application of the theorem to some thing down from the literature. Okay, so we have some collapses. Okay, and there were also upper collapses. Um, uh, but under different uh, conditions. Okay, so there's so this this collapse of finite structures was obtained um, also because it was known what, what is the algebraic condition uh, behind bounded width. Okay, so we don't have it for infinite structures, right? By this result, uh, by Bodevsky and Ridva. Um, but we have a characterization for bounded strict width, like this pseudo weak uh, pseudo knee unanimity operation. Okay, we have we have uh, the conditions for for um, bounded strict width, right? And it gives us a lot. So. I looked, uh, so I, I, I was interested in the, in the collapse, but for bounded strict width for this pseudo unanimity operation. Okay, and th this is the theorem from Stack 2020. So I looked at, at, at homogeneous graphs and that at Redux of homogeneous graphs. Uh, actually, expansions, right? Okay, so expansion is. A redact which contains uh, which contains this graph. So in these expansions, I always have the edge relation from from G. Okay. And and I showed that uh, such B, which can be defined in a homogeneous graph, uh, that it has relational width. Oh, I have this B. It has uh, okay. So it has um bounded strict to it. This B has bounded strict to it. It's not written here, I'm sorry. So then B has relational with to LG where LG is the size of the largest forbidden substructure of G, right? But it is LG cannot be smaller than three for mainly because of equality. We have to um uh, propagate equality it's for this reason. Okay, so this is also a kind of uh Collapse, uh, kind of collapse, but for first order expansions of homogeneous graph, but expansions which have bounded strict to it. Okay, and so what was the corollary? So, uh, so. so if we have a, a, a structure which which has bounded strict to it, but and this is the first order expansion of the random graph, or this infinite equivalence relations with infinite many equivalence classes, or uh, infinite equivalence relation with two infinite equivalence classes, or the structure which is a countably many copies of K2, then the B has relational with two free, right? So we have this, uh, this B which have bounded C3. If it's expansion of HK, but it has relational with 2K. And it's the same result which was on the previous slide, but it's uh, older. Okay. And how, how, how this result was proved? Uh, it, I used some things were, which were already proved. Okay. So um, there is a classification for homogeneous graphs by Woodrow and Lafan from 1980. Uh, we show that there are basically not many possible homogeneous graphs. So if you take an infinite graph, if you want it to be homogeneous, 
there are just several classes there which, are, which can be easily described. And then I also use some lemmas from the complicated classification for CSP over homogeneous graphs uh, by Bodiski, Pinsker, Bongard, and Martin. Okay, so I built on these results. But then came, um, I think, a more interesting result. So we now generalize. We don't just take a homogeneous graph. We take a structure over a binary, uh, over binary, um, we have just binary, binary relations, right? So we can say that some, uh, some relations, so some vertices are connected by a um, pink edge. Some vertices are connected by a green edge. Some vertices are connected by whatever edge, right? And these edges can be also directed, right? And any two edges are connected by something. Okay. Uh, then such, such is a binary core, right? So you can say, you can say it's a, if you just took a graph with edge relation, this non-edge relation, uh, then it would be a par particular case of, of this. Okay. And uh, also we're restricted to liberal operations, uh, to, to liberal binary cores. So substructures of size three, four, five, and six, uh, we cannot forbid such substructures for some reasons. Okay, uh, so this uh, so this binary core which is liberal, and uh, and I proved that if you have a, so we start from the structure which is liberal finitely bounded homogeneous also binary core. So I have this finitely bounded homogeneous, and I <coughs> take a first order expansion which has bounded street width. That then B has relational uh, width uh, to LA, right? So it's a similar result as for the homogeneous graphs, okay? Where LA is the size of the largest forbidden substructures of A, but not smaller than three. So this result is similar as for graphs, but for, for us, it doesn't generalize the previous result because the structure has to be liberal, right? So I cannot forbid, for, for instance, Triangles, okay. But on on the positive side, okay. So, but there are some. So there are there are things which are called also Hanson digraphs. So in Hanson Hanson graphs, you forbid um, a clique, okay. And in Hanson digraphs, you can forbid a tournament of, of some a directed clique. Of size, let's say seven, or any, any subset, actually, any set of tournaments of any size. And you still can uh, construct a homogeneous diagram. Okay. So, if, for instance, you take such structure and it's first order expansion with bounded street width, then B has relational width seven. Okay, but uh, okay, so uh, so this this is this result again, and um, and what is different? I mean, the proof is completely different than for homogeneous graphs. Okay, it's completely different. Um, Because there is no classification of liberal finitely bounded homogeneous structures, right? I mean, the only assumptions that I use is that B is a first order expansion of this finitely bounded homogeneous structure, and that, that B is preserved by this pseudo Whitney unanimity operation, right? So they are the only assumptions. I didn't use any other results. So it's a completely, completely different proof. And there are not some, many such proofs in the realm of infinite domain CSP. So 
when you want to prove uh, the dichotomy, when you also have to work with some, um, you also have to work with um, some reduct of some structures on st structure only under the assumption when you have pseudo Seeger's term, right? So it's a similar situation. It's a different uh, polymorphism, different condition on an operation, uh, but it's a similar situation. You know, right? So maybe we can somehow can learn anything from this proof uh, to prove something more more general. Even if you are not very excited about this result, okay, as it's put here, it uses a completely different strategy, a completely different um, proof. Right? I mean, it's quite very general. Uh, it could be more general, and I hope it will be, uh, but it's uh, general. I, I don't use any, any, any results. It was, uh, it was published at VIX 2020. And so, the, so I dare to state the conjecture so let's say we have a structure A, which is finitely bounded homogeneous, and we have first order expansion of the structure. So maybe it's true that because uh, relational with Ka La, where Ka is the largest arity of relation in A, and La is the size of the largest forbidden substructures for A, right? So it works for for this liberal finitely bounded homogeneous uh, course because they are binary. So it's here too, right? And LA is the same. And uh, it also works for FO expansions of homogeneous gas. So, yeah. So I don't know, I have more, but I know if I can make it in five minutes, but maybe I will say something. Uh, in the worst case, you would just interrupt me. So I said and anything they want to say about constant satisfaction problem, right? So there are still some open problems for bounded with, um, right? So there are still some open problems like this conjecture. Uh, maybe it's not like exact, uh, maybe it's not exact, maybe it's something similar. Uh, it's still not, not known uh, if this pseudo wiki unanimity gives enlock space. Uh, uh, but there are also other similar problems which was which were uh, studied in the literature. So uh, you can also define CSPB as, as in a different way, another different way. Right? So you have again the structure B over domain B some um, signature, and you can just write a formula, which is called a primitive positive formula. It's just a conjunction of atom formulas, right? So these guys were just constants before, now they are atomic formulae. And it's a sentence, so we ex existentially quantify every variable, and we can ask if this phi is true. Okay, it's just the same, the same question uh, as for CSP. But in this way, if we put it in, in this way, then you can generalize it. Like why these variables have to be existential? Okay. Uh, so they can be also universal because why not, right? I mean, everyone knows QBF, right? QBF, in QBF, you have universal quantifiers. So why not to generalize it to QCSP as SAP was generalized to CSP, okay? So in this question, we have a quantified positive sentence uh, with some variables um, quantified universally. And we ask if this is true in this in the structure. Okay, so uh, QBF is, a, is an example of this, of this problem. Uh, but uh, in fact, I think that this is more of theoretical interest, right? I mean, you can try to say that something like quantified coloring, quantified horn sack, uh, maybe for the Boolean, maybe for the Boolean domain, it makes sense, right? They're QBF solvers, but for CSP over QCSP over larger finite domains, uh, it's, it's purely theoretical, I, I do. Okay, so what is known about finite domain QCSP? 
Okay, so there is a, a classification for for two element domain. Okay, it's either in P or it's P space complete. There are no some collapsibility techniques. So it means there are techniques. Sometimes QCSP can be rewritten uh, into a polynomial uh, size CSP, which is satisfiable even only if the, if the original QCSP instance is satisfiable. Okay. And uh, for some time, it was the chance conjecture, was stated by Hubi Chen. But QCSP is in P or SP space complete. Um, but then it was shown it's not true. Okay. So, uh, like two years ago at Stock 2020, it was this paper by Barnaby Martin and Dimitri Zhu. And they showed that, for instance, okay, so for our conservative structures, we have structures that contain all binary. Relations. Okay, so it, it still uh, matches the chance conjecture, right? I think it's in P and P complete or P space complete. But in the same paper, it, it was shown that um, over the three element domain, there also can, can't be complete problems. Uh, can't be problems. Uh, so there, uh, but uh, they were also shown so called QCSP monsters. Uh, there are problems which are DP complete or theta P2 complete. There are some exotic complexity classes. And uh, this year in January, at, uh, it's a conjecture which is called a heptachotomic conjecture. It's a new word maybe for us. Uh, but QCSP is one, it's in P, it's MP complete, QNP complete, DP complete. That P2 complete or by P2 complete or P space complete. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and since it was uh, formulated by Zhuk, I believe it can be true. Uh, but there's also some work in temp temporal QSP. So the temporal structure is a structure which has first order reduct over Q with the order. Uh, okay. So the first result was uh, a classification for QCSP B for redux of N equality, right? So you can use equality, disequality uh, to write different uh, relations. And it was shown that either in log space and P complete or P space complete. I mean, it wasn't shown like that, right? It was shown that it's P space complete. It was one open case. Uh, this was a Leak 2007 paper. It was one open case. Uh, when well, it was not known. I mean, the, it was QNP hardness, but there was neither P space hardness nor QNP uh, completeness. And it was like last year, uh, right, uh, proved by Martin and Zug, when this one open case is P, P space complete. Okay, so there are also other uh, results for temporal QCSP, like this one, if I have with my. PD supervisor. Uh, so we have temporal languages, but we can be defined, but without negation. So we have only like quick disequality, conjunction, and disjunction. And in this case, QCSP can be in log space and log space P complete and P complete or P space complete. There are more results. Like there is a result. If we can define Every structure by conjunctions of this so called ORS horn, right? It's a bit similar to horn uh, for propositional logic, but you don't have negation, but this disequalities. And here, this positive feature can be either this one or this one or this one. Okay. Uh, so if a structure is definable by conjunction of, of such uh, clauses, and this additional duality clause. Which means it's preserved by minus, right? So minus is an operation that takes uh, half to minus half. So it, it was it was shown in two papers, in paper with Kubichan, and uh, paper in Kubichan it was shown like tractability case, uh, and then in, I showed also that it's enough, right? So these two papers is 
whole, whole like classification. I mean, maybe it's not whole because it has no complete cases here, but it's shown it's either in P and P hard or con P hard. Okay, and it also a bit relates to to data uh, to bandit width. Okay, because this algorithm, polynomial algorithm, which we have for this case. Uh, maybe you remember where Pebble games. I mean, like this uh, Pebble games is a different uh, way of defining bounded width. Okay, so I didn't give the details, right? But uh, there was this theorem. So for our algorithm, we generalized Pebble games to so called Pebble games with backlinks, right? So we used uh, bounded width uh, also for QCSP, I mean, generalization. Okay, so it's somehow relevant to the topic of bounded width. And I also uh, generalize it to all duality closed structures, not only um, not only our core. Uh, there's also uh, there were also other similarly such pro pro problems. So we know that structure has bounded uh, strict width. Uh, if it's preserved by pseudo uh, wiki, by pseudo unanimity operation. Uh, but sometimes for some people, it's interested to know the syntactical characterization. Okay. <coughs> so, um, so people in this temporal and spatial reasoning, which I mentioned in the beginning, so, um, we were trying to characterize all temporal languages uh, with bounded strict width. And there were, there, there were some uh, partial results um, in the 90s. Uh, but then it was uh, approved like 10 years ago, but the structure is orthorn, right? So it's again definable by conjunctions of such clauses. Then it has bounded strict width, if and only if it's definable by a conjunction of basic or thorn clauses. Okay, so, so these basic or thorn clauses is, are either like uh, atoms, so we can have right, x less than or equal y less than y equals y different from y, or we can write. Um, a disjunction of disequalities, okay. or we can write a very particular um, clause of this form with x less than y, but but then all all, all these inequalities here like has need to have x on, on one side, and all this here needs to have y on one side. You're running out of time. Yes, I know. Uh, and then this was, uh, and then it was proved that temporal language has bounded with, if and only it's odd horn. So from these two results, we have the whole classification, this syntactical characterization um, of, of temporal structures with uh, bounded C3. So it generalizes some of these results from 90s. And the last thing I want to say is about abduction. So maybe I will not define it was stop that if I'm running out of time, uh, but we proved some things that if structure, let's say if you have a bounded fit, we gives also polynomial time algorithm for abduction under some reasonable assumptions. And you also gave a character a complexity classification of abductions over equality languages. Uh, I think that's all.